So we've already been talking about, we've already seen one episode of What If. Uh, they have a lot of returning characters, a lot of returning voice talent. Uh, episode two is one a lot of people have been waiting on. It is the episode where T'Challa becomes Star-Lord. I was about to say Black Panther. <laughs> but it's when uh, T'Challa becomes uh, Star-Lord. And we already know Star-Lord was supposed to be played by Peter Quill. But that's the whole point of these What If series, right? They take a concept that we already understand from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And then they switch it up a little bit just to throw you off. Just to throw me off. And in this case... It makes things a lot more interesting. Um, in this instance, the Ravagers go to Earth, sent by Yondu to pick up <laughs> T'Challa becomes Black Lord. Uh, Yondu uh, sends Kraglin and Taserface down to pick up young Star-Lord Peter Quill from Earth, right? But they mess up. They obviously mess up because they get, you know, T'Challa, this little black kid, instead of this white kid that is the son of Ego, right? They even, like, make a joke to it to where he's just like, yo, does this kid look like this kid, right? And it shows um, young uh, T'Challa out hunting one night, not even hunting, just throwing a spirit exercise and runs outside the protective barrier of Wakanda, only to get picked up by these two, right? Now, obviously... They uh, let him know that they're wrong, right? He's like, Yandu was like, yo, bro, who the hell is this? He's like, yeah, man, this is the kid. He's like, that's definitely, yeah, yeah I see two holes, you know? <laughs> One mouth hole, you know? Like, man, and on top of that, Sean Gunn and the person, I can't remember their name, my bad guy, who voiced uh, Taserface is also back reprising his role. I'm really liking What If. The second episode is crazy because it goes into uh, T'Challa black panther becoming star lord instead and they talk about like how they went down to pick him up and taser face and uh craglin pick him up but it's the wrong kid uh and they actually ended up meeting a lot more characters throughout this entire thing right there's a lot more characters but what's really cool was how they how we first see uh t'challa it's the same way it's the same way that we saw the original store lord pop up and it was going to get this device that actually holds an infinity stone but instead this time he runs into uh oh man i can't remember his name but he runs in it's same he runs into the same people from the first movie from the original guardians of the galaxy movie right but instead of not knowing instead of not knowing who star lord was he legit was like, yo, you're like the Star Lord. Who? All right, he hit him with that. At first, it was who, but this time, it's more, yo, everybody looks up to T'Challa. Like he's he's what Star Lord actually. He's what <laughs> Peter Quill wants to be in space. And we all know that the original story, especially if you've seen Guardians of the Galaxy two, was the fact that. He was supposed to pick up Star-Lord or Peter Quill to be dropped off to Ego, who had already had already kind of like left a very, very dangerous plant on the Earth. But they picked up the wrong kid. So none of that plays a different a part until the end of the movie in which we see if they had actually took T'Challa to be the new Star-Lord, then things would have got really messy. Now, in this in this episode, right, there's a few things that happen. We get to see, uh, you can see him back there, Thanos actually shows up. We get a new, improved, not mechanized nebula. Um, also, I don't know if a lot of people notice this, but you know how, you guys remember how um, Peter Quill ship, Star-Lord ship, was named after his crush, right? The Milano, right? This ship is actually called the Mandela. Which is such a, like, the detail that they paid to, like, going down and making, like, Star-Lord, if he was actually T'Challa B, you know, a T'Challa-like character is so good, right? So the name of his ship is not the Milano, it was the Mandela for Mandela, right? But this is a scene taken from when he eventually goes back home. I know you guys are like, why is Thanos with him? But that's because in this what-if scenario, T'Challa actually talked down thanos from being the mad titan even to the point where thanos joined 
the Ravagers alongside Yandu and T'Challa uh, as the new Black Panther. And Nebula as well. Of course, like the team shot. He even ends up uh, he ends up picking up more villains that we typically saw from the first movie, right? Like, I can't remember his name. Digimon's... Uh, Digimon... Two, I can't remember his name. Digimon Hansu's character. Korath actually dies, right? Korath actually dies. This guy over here actually dies. But now, in this instance, he's just a big-ass fan of Star-Lord, right? Which is hilarious to me because he's the bad guy, right? Chill dad Thanos with a t-shirt is top tier. <laughs> it was amazing how he rescued the, the guy. Yeah, he, he definitely saved Korath's life. And just like a side note, it has been some of the dopest scenes. Some of the dopest scenes uh, in this movie, uh, in this movie, in the show, come from the fact that they really they really go the distance when animating a lot of these scenes and shots and some of these new scenes and shots that we typically wouldn't have seen in the original movie or one of the original properties very very well like this scene is from the collector's uh main room what about ronin does he show up ronin does not show up and Taserface was definitely fun to watch right Taserface living up to the name korath in the og universe star lord who korath in the t'challa uh, star lord universe star lord fanboy <laughs> classic star lord <laughs> he was killing me with that classic star lord but yeah they do a really good job of like maintaining like the how colorful guardians of the galaxy is they even have music mixed from both black panther as well as guardians of the galaxy uh they have a lot of the familiar themes and this is from taken from like the last fight scene and like i said once again just playing to like these cool shots uh very neon colorish i love the solar flare uh, a lot of easter eggs too if you guys go back and you go to the collectors uh the main room where they were fighting there was a lot of uh easter eggs one of them being cosmo the dog also who was in there they had cosmo in there howard the duck who eventually hangs out with them as well this is new and improved not mechanized nebula and one of the things that happens in the episode is that he sees that the collector has a ship from Wakanda that was originally sent to look for Star-Lord in space or T'Challa in space. And you see here that like the Dora Milaje were actually on the spacecraft. I mean, obviously they didn't find T'Challa, right? But the goal was to find T'Challa. It was even a video there of the... T'Challa's father saying like hey we lost our son and like we're trying to find him oh shit this is a show Jesus Christ Chilogen yeah this is the Marvel What If series that's on Disney Plus bro yeah and T'Challa Starlord does not have celestial heritage nor does he have like Panther superpowers so he's just a human like Starlord he's really just a human like Starlord but he was different right like so even though he found this ship right that found out that his heritage from Earth was still intact um he was just a regular person right like he didn't have powers like i just said he didn't you know like he didn't have any kind of special heritage but like this show really does capture the like it captures all the storytelling elements and it puts him in a new light if you go back and you look at the collector's room like he had mjolnir in there he had a captain america show he even had hella's uh headpiece from the thor ragnarok movies right and they also talk about how uh they talk about how the Collector became the bad guy of space, right? He became this tyrant because T'Challa actually talked Thanos into not being the Mad Titan. Even though he stands by the idea. Even though this new Thanos stands by the idea that erasing half the universe because it was random. Because since it was a random choice, that it was a good thing and he still holds on to it. But T'Challa was the person who talked him out of being the Mad Titan in the marvel what if series right like if the mad titan was still thanos but he didn't go crazy and try to wipe out half the universe it was because t'challa in this instance spoke spoke to him talked him down and made it you know actually just made him join the ravagers but he finds this ship because this necklace that he actually kept and you can see it here actually goes off and then that's how he locates the ship and this is after he meets up with howard the duck who tells him how to find all this stuff so yeah, he keep, he kept saying Thanos' idea to talk about how wiping out half the universe randomly, he kept saying it was efficient. He was like, I still stand that it's efficient. Also, for the record, uh, this T'Challa is voiced 
by Chadwick Boseman. Uh, Thor, uh, Thor, um, Thanos is voiced by Josh Brolin. Uh, all a lot of the voice actors outside of like Drax, um, Peter Quill, uh, Kurt Russell even came back to voice Ego. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Jillian Anderson came back to voice Nebula. Even Benicio del Toro. A person with one of the coolest names in, ever in existence came back to voice the collector. A new buff collector on top of that. And still, my man Star-Lord, T'Challa was out here throwing hands with him. And he even has, like, you know, the Peter Quill pistol. He's got the rocket boots you can see right there. So, very much living up to the name. He, got, he has, like, a sleeker, cooler jacket, though. Yeah, he actually runs into Drax, who is not, like, this crazy person now, right? Still has the same kind of attitude, but... Also not voiced by Batista. But yeah, he actually met T'Challa, right? And he thanked him because he saved his planet. Yeah, Swole Collector was buff, bro. You say Jack Collector looked like Brawley? Yeah, kind of, sort of. But yeah, just another shot of him in the, the cool Star-Lord mask. Marvel plans wasn't detailed past what if. I mean, they got a whole movie, you know, to they got many movies to worry about. You said you want the action figure of the collector? You know, I actually just want the collector to come back. You didn't even recognize Benicio Del Toro? I love Benicio Del Toro, the juice, just FYI. So you can see here Thanos with Cosmo, the dog, another character that we that a returning character from the live action movies, the comic books, now in animated form. The animation is always good. The animation is always good. Like, it's been pretty solid. I ain't gonna say pretty. It's been amazing since the show started. They take a lot of scenes that we've already seen before, especially, like, even scenes from Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Captain America that we've seen so far, and I'm sure we'll see more in the episode three that we're gonna see today. But here he is mimicking the snap, right? Talking to Cosmo. Did... Thanos killed the, uh, the Collector in Infinity War? I don't think he did, actually. I don't think he did, LLJB3. Because they show his ship, right? Like, somebody else could have took his ship, but they still show in... Once they show the ship again, in the, the warehouse where Thanos was after he fought, like, the Guardians and uh, Gamora and them, like, you see the ship behind him in rubble. But the... But the collector's body is not where it is during the illusion, so. But this episode was actually really cool, man. Like, we never, I never really thought about how they could change it up this effectively. Uh, nor did I think they was going to put this much detail into the characters, as well as just tell very good stories. <laughs>